soon as Marty came back from school, she ran down to their two fields behind the house. Her ba and Aji, father and grandmother, were pulling out potatoes from the ground. Marty too started working. The potatoes had to be put in a basket. When it was full, it had to be emptied into two larger baskets at the edge of the field. This earth is our gold, Ba said, as he turned the soil with his spade and Aji pulled out potatoes. Mati picked up a spade too, but her father shouted, Hey, put the powder down. It's too heavy. You will get hurt and also spoil the crop. Mati didn't listen and started to dig clumsily. Her father came to her in three long strides and snatched the spade from her. Give me the powder. You've spoiled my field. Look. More doli hai. It's my field. Marty replied angrily. Girls don't have fields, her father said. What a thing to say, Aji said sharply. I was just joking, Dai. Marty's bar tried to calm her, but Aji wouldn't stop. How much I have had to fight to keep my land? Just to plough it, I had to go against the whole village. <laughs> they used to laugh at me. It has taken me so long to get my rights. And now you say things like this? You, who have been brought up alone by your mother? Even as a joke, it hurts. She moved away from him to another patch. Marty went and sat beside her, knowing that her grandmother was upset. Won't you both forgive me? Marty's father asked, as both his mother and daughter looked angrily at him. No, because now we know you are like all other men, Aji said. Good that your daughter is smarter than me. And as stubborn, Ba replied. If I hadn't been stubborn, we wouldn't have had this land, Aji told him. Her son knew this was true, so he smiled sheepishly and got back to work. The thought that the fields were not hers kept worrying Mati. She decided she should have her own. Every day she pestered her ba and Aji. Give me my doli, my field. I want my own doli khet. So one day, her grandmother went to the market and got a small powder. Then, with Mati by her side, she took ten steps next to where the three trees stood and marked out a small square. Here, this is your doli. Now look after it. What shall I grow in it? Daan, moong phali, tomato, alu? Mati felt greedy. She wanted to grow everything that grew in the big fields. Rice, peanuts, tomato, potato. Straight after school, Mati would work hard in her field. Every day, her grandmother would tell her what to do how to channel water, make a small boundary and plant, then weed. Marty would help Aji in the big fields too, but only after working in her own first. And she wouldn't let her father near her land. You go to your doli khet. This is mine, she would say. Her father would laugh and go do his own work. Are noni, why, little girl? Your doli is the best in the village, others called out, and Marty felt very proud. Meanwhile, there were meetings taking place in the village. Aji always went for them. Sometimes she took Marty with her. It seemed their village would soon have a big coal mine. A company wanted land for it. The company people had started coming to ask the villagers to give up their land. In return, they would get a lot of money, they were told. They could do whatever they wanted with it, make a new house, buy a motorcycle or jeep, send their children to expensive schools. Some of the big farmers were willing to sell their land, but many of the small farmers were not. We should not give up our land. The money will go before we know it, they said. Farming was what they knew. How could they live without land? 
Mighty too was worried about her land. One day, her grandmother and father had to go for a meeting to another village. Mighty went with them. The village was next to a coal mine. Black coal dust coated the roads. Some people had sold their houses and left the village. Those who were left were making barriers around their land to mark it so no one could come in without their permission. They were taken to the edge of the village to see the mine, a huge deep black hole in the ground with a mountain of coal waste behind it. Mati felt her stomach flip as she looked. Is this what would happen to her village? To her doli? But she was quiet all the way back, tired from all the excitement and worry. Just when she had managed to get her own doli, there was a company much bigger than them all, with a monster machine to swallow up her land. That night, when Aji went to the neighbor's house, Mati quietly took her powder and a torch and went out. Her grandmother came back and found her missing. Where is she? She asked Mati's ba. Uh, she was here a little while ago, he said, looking around. They both looked everywhere in the house. Then they went out, first to the front, then to the back, out into their fields. In the torchlight, Aji saw Mati sleeping near her patch by the three trees, clutching her powder. What are you doing here, Noni? She asked softly as she picked her up. In her sleep, Mati felt Aji's warm body around her. It had been cold on the ground and she was happy for the comfort of her grandmother's warmth. Noni? Tola saab jan why are you sleeping here, Noni? We were looking for you everywhere. Aji sounded angry and confused. I am saving my land, said Mati. Her grandmother hugged her tight. Yes, Noni, she said. We have to save our land. But now, come inside and sleep.